Alrighty, folks, this is our third and final video with, for lesson 2.3. Here we go. Let's tie into it. We're going to finish up the bottom of your notes here, and then we'll be done. Now, a lot of these I am going to recommend that you draw yourself a little sketch, just so we have an idea of what this is looking like. So I'm just sketching my axes here real quick. Now, what they're going to do is, it says, from the given information, make a conclusion regarding the possible number of zeros, 0, 1, and 2. If the value of the discriminant is positive, negative, or 0, if you can't make a conclusion based on the given data state, not enough information. So here we go, negative 2, negative 5. Vertex at negative 2, negative 5. That means we're going to be down here is where our vertex is going to be located. And if A is greater than 0, A is greater than 0, that means that our parabola has to open up, right? So if we sketch this thing, the vertex is going to be the minimum. That means that it has to, by necessity, going to cross the x-axis two times. So that means it will intersect the x-axis. We'll have two real zeros. And that implies that b squared minus 4ac is going to have to be positive. It's going to have to be bigger than zero. All right, let's move on to the next one. Number eight. I'm going to scroll a little bit, make it easier for me to write. All right, I'm going to have my axes right here. All right. It says vertex of 3, 2. Over 3, up 2. Somewhere in this region, right? Okay. And it says a y-intercept of 5. Now, if the y-intercept is over here at 5, that'd be above, all right? That means that this graph, if this is the lowest it'll ever be at, right, it's either the minimum or the max if it's a vertex. Now, if it was like this, there's no way it would ever hit the y-intercept at 5. So it must be the other way around. It must be coming down, hitting that vertex, and going up. So we know we have enough evidence to state that this parabola will never hit the x-axis or touch the x-axis. So we have zero zeros. And that indicates that the b squared minus 4ac must have yielded a negative value. So we had to take the square root of negative. Moving on. Again, a quick sketch. All right. It says vertex at 2, 0. So here's my vertex. So I know immediately that this is either doing this or this. It's one or the other. All right, so here we are. And it says going to the point 4, negative 8. Now the point 4, negative 8 is going to be way down here. So that tells me that this parabola is coming up here, touching that, and going down. The vertex is right on the x-axis. That means I have one zero. It's going to be the dump. It's going to wear two hats. It's going to be our zero and our vertex. And that means in order to find only one outcome from the quadratic formula, that our b squared minus 4ac had to have equaled 0. Moving on down. Almost done. 10 and 11. Now, these are the toughies. Number 10. i got to be really careful about how I draw this one. All right. We have the point negative 2, 3. All right. Negative 2, 3. All right, negative 2, 3, I'm going to go ahead and plot that. We have the point 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, up 3. So those are going to be symmetric points. Now, what do we know then? We know that our axis of symmetry has to be directly in between those two, from negative 2 to 4. The axis of symmetry has to be in the middle because those are symmetric points. They have the same y-coordinate. So we add those two together and divide by 2 and we get 1. So we know our axis of symmetry, the vertex, has to be right there. All right, now the point 5, 5 is the next point that they give us. 5, 5, over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I have a question for you. If this point they gave us right here, and I'm going to, I'll make it right there. This point 4, 3, it was over 4, up 3, all right? We know that that's coming from the vertex. If the next point over from it, all right, is only over one space and only up two. Was this parabola growing very quickly? Think about our one, one, two, two, four, three, nine pattern. 
And I got to go down here. I'll erase this in a minute when we get to this problem. But if we went um, to the right one and then up one, right? I can write that a little bit neater. Forgive me. All right. When we went over one, we go up one. Over two, up four. This is for the most basic of quadratics. Over three, up nine. Now, my question is, how far apart were these points when we were graphing them? One, one was then over one, up three. It was going up pretty quick. From this point over two, up four, we've been over one more, but up five. This parabola is not going up steep enough. It's going to be going one of these numbers. Okay, I, I'm trying to show you that we have evidence to say that this parabola is open really wide and is never going to get down low enough to touch the x-axis. So even though it's some tough evidence to look at, it means we'll have zero zeros, and we're going to have a b squared at minus 4ac, a, a determinate value that must be negative. It must be less than zero. And finally, that was the toughest one on here. This one here, if we look at the point 2, 3, and 6, 3, over 2, 3, and 6, 3, symmetric points again. So that means, again, if we add those together and divide by 2 at 4, that's going to be my axis of symmetry. Then we have that last point they give us, which is at 5, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 5. Do we have enough information to know that now we know that this thing is going to open down? Yes. And we don't care how wide it is. We know it's going down, so sooner or later, it's got to cross that x-axis twice. So we're going to have two zeros. And that indicates that the b squared minus 4ac must have been positive, enabling us to have two things. One we're going to add, one we're going to subtract. Folks, be sure your homework is to work on that Lesson 2-3 assignment. When you're done with that, complete the 2-1-2-2 formative assessment. That's take home, all right? I'd like to have both of those done and ready to turn in by Let's say Monday, because not everybody has class on Friday. So for those of you who have class on Friday, big note down here. Work on day, work day on Friday. For those of you who have class mods 3, 4 on Friday or mods 5, 6 on Friday, you have work time. You can work on both of these in class. You should be able to get them both done with the work time you're going to have today and on Friday so that you aren't taking any homework home. That'd be the goal. So again, work on the lesson 2, 3, try it on your own problems. And the 2122 formative assessment. Remember, only do the front of the assessment, not the back. Don't do the corrections quite yet. And we'll see you folks. So have a great weekend. Thank you very much.